Voyager 1, a tiny spacecraft the size of a car, is drifting through the unimaginable darkness of space, 14.5 billion miles from Earth. Launched in 1977, it was only meant to last five years. But nearly 50 years later, Voyager is still alive, defying the odds. Recently, though, something bizarre has been happening. It's sending back signal patterns, pulses, and data that don't make sense. Could Voyager have found something in the void between stars? Or even more chilling, has something out there found? Voyager? The birth of a star sailor. The story of Voyager begins not with spaceflight, but with a rare cosmic alignment. In the early 1970s, astronomers realized something incredible was about to happen. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune would soon align in a way that occurs only once every 175 years. This alignment would allow a spacecraft to visit all four planets in a single mission, using each planet's gravity as a slingshot to the next. NASA couldn't resist this cosmic opportunity. They began designing twin spacecraft that could survive the harsh radiation around Jupiter, the unknown dangers of Saturn's rings, and the decade-long journey through the outer solar system. This was the birth of the Grand Tour mission, later renamed Voyager. The spacecraft themselves were marvels of 1970s engineering. Each Voyager probe weighed about 1,800 lebees and carried 11 scientific instruments. They were powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, essentially nuclear batteries that convert heat from decaying plutonium into electricity. Without these power sources, solar panels would have been useless in the dim light of the outer planets. The construction of the Voyagers was a massive undertaking. Engineers had to design systems that could function flawlessly for years without any possibility of repair. They built in multiple backups for critical systems and programmed the computers to diagnose and fix their own problems when possible. The onboard computer had about 68 kbyte of memory, less than what it takes to store a single digital photo today. On August 20, 1977, Voyager 2 lifted off from Cape Canaveral. It launched first, despite being number two. 16 days later, on September 5th, Voyager 1 followed, riding into space atop a Titan IIe Centaur rocket. Because Voyager 1 was on a faster trajectory, it would overtake its twin to reach Jupiter and Saturn first. As the two probes sailed away from Earth, few could have imagined that nearly half a century later, one of them would still be making headlines, not for what it was finding, but for what might have found it. The Grand Tour. Voyager 1's journey through our solar system was nothing short of spectacular. After a cruise of about 18 months, it made its closest approach to Jupiter in March 1979. What it saw there transformed our understanding of the giant planet. Jupiter, through Earth-based telescopes, had always been a pretty but simple-looking object, a striped ball with a mysterious red spot. Through Voyager's eyes, Jupiter became a world of stunning complexity. The great red spot, which we'd observed since the 1600s, was revealed as a massive storm system that could swallow three Earths. The colorful bands weren't just pretty patterns, but raging storms and jet streams moving at hundreds of miles per hour. But Jupiter's moons stole the show. Io, the innermost large moon, shocked everyone when Voyager spotted actual volcanic eruptions happening in real time. The first active volcanoes ever seen beyond Earth. These volcanoes weren't spewing lava-like on Earth, but sulfur compounds that painted Io's surface in yellows, oranges, and reds, like a cosmic pizza. Then there was Europa, a smooth white moon covered in cracks like a shattered eggshell. Voyager's images led scientists to theorize that beneath its icy surface might lie an ocean of liquid water, a theory that later missions would strengthen, and that now makes Europa one of our best hopes for finding alien life in our solar system. After Jupiter, Voyager 1 raced towards Saturn, reaching the ringed planet in November 1980. Again, what had seemed simple from Earth became gloriously complex up close. 
Saturn's rings, which look like solid bands from Earth, broke down into thousands of individual ringlets, some braided, some with strange spokes, all moving and changing like a cosmic dance. Saturn's largest moon, Titan, particularly interested. Scientists, because it was the only moon in our solar system with a substantial atmosphere. Voyager couldn't see through Titan's orange haze but measured its atmosphere and found it was mostly nitrogen, just like Earth's. This discovery eventually led to the Cassini-Huygens mission decades later, which found lakes and rivers of liquid methane on Titan's surface. After Saturn, Voyager 1's planetary mission was complete. NASA had a choice. They could send it to Pluto, then still considered our ninth planet, or they could direct it northward out of the plane of the solar system, beginning its journey into interstellar space sooner. They chose the latter path, while Voyager 2 continued on to Uranus and Neptune. As Voyager 1 left Saturn behind, it turned its camera back toward the planets for one last look. In February 1990, at Carl Sagan's suggestion, it took a series of pictures that included what became known as the pale blue dot image, Earth, a tiny blue pixel in a sunbeam, seen from 3.7 billion miles away. Sagan's reflection on this image would become one of the most profound statements about humanity's place in the cosmos ever written. And then Voyager 1 fell silent, at least visually. NASA turned off the cameras to save power, and the spacecraft sailed into the darkness, blind but still sensing, still listening, still sending back data about the space between the stars. The golden record, attached to the side of each Voyager. Spacecraft is a gold-plated copper disk, 12 inches in diameter, a time capsule meant to tell the story of Earth to any intelligence that might find it in the distant future. The golden record, as it's known, is humanity's message in a bottle, tossed into the cosmic ocean. The story of the golden record is almost as fascinating as Voyager itself. NASA gave a team led by Carl Sagan just six weeks to decide what to put on it, six weeks to sum up all of human existence. The team worked around the clock, arguing passionately about what music, sounds, and images should represent our world to the stars. The final contents are extraordinary in their diversity. The record contains greetings in 55 languages, from Akkadian, a language spoken 6,000 years ago, to Wu, a Chinese dialect. There are sounds from Earth, thunderstorms, volcanoes, birds, whales, laughter, footsteps, and a human heartbeat. There's music from around the world, Bach's Brandenburg Concerto, a Navajo night chant, a Peruvian wedding song, and Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. The record also includes 116 images encoded in analog form, diagrams showing mathematical concepts, photos of Earth's landscapes, pictures of human activities, and illustrations of DNA structure. There's a message from then-President Jimmy Carter and UN Secretary General Kurt Waldheim. On the cover of each record is a diagram showing how to play it at 1623 revolutions per minute and a pulsar map showing Earth's location in the galaxy. The records are expected to last for billions of years, long outlasting Earth itself. The chances of an alien civilization ever finding a Voyager spacecraft are incredibly small. The nearest star to Voyager 1's trajectory is AC plus 793888 which it will pass in about 40,000 years, and even then it will still be 1.7 light years away. But that wasn't really the point. As Sagan said, the record was a kind of symbolic statement, a way of saying, we made it this far. We hope you exist. There's something profoundly moving about these golden records still traveling outward, carrying the sounds of children's laughter, whale songs, and Bach, into the infinite darkness. They represent humanity at its most hopeful and forward-thinking, the same spirit that built the Voyagers themselves. Little did we know that the golden record might not be our first message received by another intelligence, because something out in the darkness between stars seems to have taken an interest in Voyager itself. Years in the void, 
after its encounters with Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 1 entered what engineers called the cruise phase, a seemingly endless journey through the outer solar system. With no more planets to visit, public interest waned as the spectacular images stopped coming. NASA's focus shifted to newer missions like the Hubble Space Telescope and the Mars rovers. But Voyager kept on going, traveling about a million miles, every day steadily moving toward the edge of our solar system, wherever that might be. Scientists weren't actually sure where our solar system ended. They knew the sun creates a protective bubble called the heliosphere, where the solar wind, a stream of charged particles flowing from the sun, pushes against the interstellar medium. But they didn't know exactly how big this bubble was or what lay beyond it. During these quiet years, Voyager continued to send back crucial data about the outer solar system. It measured how the solar wind changes with distance, mapped magnetic, field lines, and detected cosmic rays, high-energy particles from beyond our solar system. This information helped scientists build better models of how our sun interacts with interstellar space. Life on board Voyager during these decades was a constant battle against the inevitable. Its power supply, fueled by the heat from decaying plutonium-238, gets about 4 watts weaker every year. Engineers had to make tough decisions about which instruments to keep running and which to shut down forever. The cameras went dark in 1990. Other instruments followed as power dwindled. And all the while, the distance between Voyager and Earth grew, making communication increasingly difficult. The signal from Voyager became so faint that only NASA's largest antennas in the deep space network could detect it. By the 2000s, it took over 14 hours for a radio signal traveling at the speed of light to make the one-way journey. But Voyager 1 kept transmitting, sending back data about a region of space no human-made object had ever visited before. And, as it did, scientists began noticing something strange. The solar wind was slowing down. The magnetic field was changing. Voyager 1 was approaching the edge of everything we knew, crossing the boundary. By the early 2000s, Voyager 1 was detecting clear signs that it was approaching the edge of our solar system. The solar wind, the stream of charged particles constantly flowing outward from the sun, was slowing down dramatically. Something was pushing back against it. In 2004, Voyager 1 crossed what scientists call the termination shock, the point where the solar wind suddenly slows as it begins to feel the pressure of the interstellar medium. For the next eight years, it traveled through a turbulent region called the Helios Heath, where the solar wind becomes compressed and chaotic. Then, on August 25, 2012, everything changed. The magnetic field strength suddenly jumped. The number of particles originating from our sun plummeted, while the number of cosmic rays from interstellar space increased dramatically. After careful analysis, NASA made the historic announcement, Voyager 1 had crossed the heliopause, the boundary, where the influence of our sun gives way to the interstellar medium. Humanity had reached the stars, or at least the space between them. But what Voyager found in interstellar space wasn't what anyone expected. Scientists had imagined this region to be relatively uniform, quiet, and predictable. Instead, Voyager discovered a dynamic environment full of surprises. The plasma, superheated, electrically charged gas, was far denser than predicted. The magnetic fields, which scientists thought would change direction once outside the sun's influence, maintained the same alignment as inside our solar system, but grew much stronger. And cosmic rays bombarded the spacecraft from all directions, in complex, unpredictable patterns. Most intriguingly, Voyager detected a phenomenon that puzzled scientists, periodic oscillations in the surrounding plasma, as if waves were passing through the interstellar medium. These tsunami waves, as some researchers called them, suggested interstellar space was far more active and structured than anyone had imagined. For the first few years after crossing into interstellar space, 
these anomalies could still be explained within the framework of conventional physics. The waves might be the result of solar flares propagating outward, finally reaching Voyager. The density variations could be natural structures in the interstellar medium. The magnetic field alignment might be a coincidence or the result of larger, galactic fields. But by 2017, the data from Voyager had become harder to explain. The oscillations in the plasma were becoming more regular, more structured. They weren't fading with distance as they should if they originated from our sun. And they were beginning to show patterns, mathematical relationships between their frequencies that hinted at something more complex than random natural phenomena. Something was out there in the void between stars, and Voyager was sailing right through it. Signals from nowhere. The first truly inexplicable anomalies in Voyager 1's data began appearing in late 2017. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory noticed that the spacecraft's Attitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, the system that keeps its antenna pointed at Earth, was sending back contradictory information. The telemetry data suggested the antenna was pointing in a direction that would make communication impossible. Yet Voyager's signal remained clear and strong. It was like getting a phone call from someone claiming to be in Antarctica while your caller ID showed they were calling from next door. First, engineers assumed this was just another glitch in Voyager's aging systems. The spacecraft was designed in the early 1970s and had been operating for 40 years in the harshest environment imaginable. Strange behavior was to be expected. They tried to diagnose the problem, sending commands for Voyager to run internal checks, but the anomaly persisted. And after months of analysis, they concluded something truly bizarre was happening. Voyager was somehow communicating correctly while simultaneously reporting its position incorrectly.